Hello, so hi, good afternoon. My name's Chris. I work for the marketing department here at Oakland's College. Firstly, I wanted to thank you for joining our webinar today. Um, so you can hear all about the college and the opportunities that are available to you. Uh, last week, we should have held our open days, but due to the current situation, that wasn't possible. However, we wanted to offer you the next best thing, um, which is the webinars that we're offering today. Um, they give you the, the chance to see some of our facilities, find out more about the courses, meet some of our tutors who are here today in the chat, um, and find out all about college life. Uh, here today, we have our head of department, Anissa Kiani, members of curriculum and also our student support team who will be available for a live question and answer session later on. If you didn't have any questions at all throughout the whole period of this webinar, please use the chat functionality, which is the little speech bubble icon that you'll see on your screen, um, and the team will answer them towards the end of the webinar. Can I ask that everyone's videos are switched off and audio is set to mute for the duration of the webinar? Um, we don't want to keep you too long, but we are aiming to run for about 30 minutes. Um, we also will record this session and post uh, the link to our website as well as our YouTube channel so you can either revisit it at a later date or share it with friends and family. Um, now we understand that these are this difficult times for you um, and we want to assure you that Oakland College are here to support you on the next stages of your education journey. On behalf of the college I'd like to also thank the NHS and all of our fantastic frontline key workers for all of their amazing support um, and work throughout the coronavirus. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll hand you over to Anissa, who will tell you all about our fantastic hospitality and catering section. Anissa. Thanks, well, thank you, Chris. Hi, my name is Anissa Kiani. I'm Head of Department for Hospitality and Catering. Today's virtual tour will be able to give you a little bit of insight of our fantastic, amazing catering department. To help me, I've invited colleagues to speak a little bit about individual courses and give you a little bit of insight of what it would be like to be a hospitality and catering student at Oakland's College. So first and foremost, as Chris has said, that we will go through the course content with regards to the catering courses, but there will be an opportunity for you to have question and answers session right at the end. So if there's any questions that you feel like that we haven't covered to do throughout the presentation, please use the chat functionality to be able to ask those questions and we'll answer them right at the end. So just a little bit about Oakland's College in general. We have an award-winning restaurant, which we are very proud of. We have multi-sports hall, gym facilities, art and design, fashion studios, a range of courses across the college. But today we're going to be talking and focusing on our hospitality and catering courses. So our facilities, we have the state-of-the-art kitchens where practical lessons take place in our professional training kitchens based in St. Albans. We also have our award-winning stables restaurant, which does up to 50 covers and is open to the public. So not only students get uh, the experience of learning how to prep and pro produce the, the um, dishes that they create, they also get the opportunity to be serving customers, which is vital and part of their development going into the catering sector. The courses that we run are arranged between level one, VRQ, NVQ, level two, VRQ, NVQ, and level three, VRQ, Advanced Professional Cookery and BTEC, Hospitality and Catering. As I go through the slides, I will be inviting colleagues to talk a little bit more about each of these courses and what these courses, uh, what would entail in each of these courses. You will be required to wear a uniform. This is part of our PPE plan and it is essential that all students have uniform. As a student at Vulcans College, you are required to purchase this uniform prior to your course starting. The price varies between 90 to 140 pounds, depending on which course you are on. What you will get for this is a set of knives, which will be engraved with your initials, chef jackets, trousers, an apron, a hat with your name engraved and safety shoes. This is part of us keeping our professional standards and meeting our health and safety requirements. So what qualification is right for you? This will really depend on your entry grades. So whether that is um, based on you, whether you have no formal entry requirements, you can go straight onto our level one MVQ. If you get a bit of experience and have your GCSEs, it will, and based on the skills knowledge that you have, you will go on to the courses and levels accordingly. However, I must stress that we do have a six-point assessment plan. So based on whatever level you are enrolled on, that six-point assessment plan will give us a clear idea to assess you to see whether you have the practical and academic ability to do the course. So making sure that you are on the, on the right course. So what is a study programme? OK, so the study programme will be uh, in, in this case it will be your hospitality and catering course. And an element of that would be maths and English. If you those of you that would be required to retake your maths and English course. 
Um, you will be also developing employability skills and work experience. So every student will complete between 20 and 40 hours of work experience and have excellent opportunity that links would work with our local companies. I would now like to uh, invite our um, head chef Martin West to talk a little bit about our internal work experience working at the Stables restaurant. So can I pass that over to you Martin? Yeah hi um, I'm Martin West the head chef of the Stables restaurant at Oaklands College um, and basically what we are is we're a realistic working environment. We're set up to give students the best quality experience they can get before going into the working world. Um, so up in our skills kitchens we'll teach you how to cook and then down in the stables we'll teach you how to become a proper chef. Um, there's loads of really good equipment and state-of-the-art uh, techniques that we try and implement as well which can sometimes be outside of the curriculum of what you'd normally learn which is a really good opportunity for you to develop your skills um, and it gives you a chance to be part of something which you can take a lot of pride in being uh, an award-winning restaurant that we are with rosettes and you get to be a part of that which is very exciting. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Martin. You'll also have your PDR sk personal development skills and you'll have a P PDR tutor that will be helping you to stay focused and set on your targets. I would like to invite uh, our chef lecturer, Mark Sharpers, to give us a little bit inside of what a PDR tutor is and what you'll be doing in your PDR sessions. So can I pass that over to you, Mark? Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Mark Sharples. I'm a chef lecturer, a coordinator for hospitality. I've been a tutor for 12 years. And I was a professional chef for 29 years before that. So PDR, so PDR means personal development review. And we do this once a week in your lessons, usually about an hour and a half. And this will range from uh, different uh, looks at sort of um, six point assessments. We'll look at um, some um, online modules such as safeguarding, uh, Facebook, uh, internet safety. We'll do some one to one. So we'll look at target settings. Uh, looking at your your progression, looking at the units that you might be uh, doing, will give you some handouts on what units you're going to cover. Um, any sort of pastoral support and student advice will be there to support you at any time. So uh, there's lots of things in PDR uh, we we can cover, um, but it's just about you getting to know what what college life is really about. Thanks, all. thank you, Mark. So how could we do the courses work? So we have, our lesson styles are two LED presentations, which are group or individual activities, and obviously with our practical sessions. The two support that you'll get is on information, resources, assignment and structure advice. I would now like to invite our uh, chef lecturer, Anthony Grover, to tell us a little bit about how Canvas and how our VLE learning will work. Hello there. Yes, um, my name's Anthony. I'm a chef lecturer. i um, been a chef for 10 years and been teaching for to Oaklands College. Um, we use Canvas, which is our online uh, learning platform, um, which is a bit like Moodle in other colleges and things like that. Um, and we use it to, to interact with the students. We use it to, to mark work. It's where you might find your resources for your, for your work. It also might be where you um, access your assignments and hand them in. Um, but it's, it's, it's a way of you accessing work from home or outside of outside of the classroom and inside of the classroom at times as well. Thanks. Thank you, Anthony. So the student support that you receive at college, all students will have a personal tutor and regular monitor of progress and performance can be tracked via pro portal. You'd have access to this. And if you're under 18, so would your parents through parent portal. Student advisors provide welfare and support and advice. So those students that are struggling with outside of the workload or if there are things that are affecting in terms of their welfare, that support will be available. You'd also get financial support for those who need it. This is something that will be covered in your, in your PDR one to one sessions, but also be given to you support right in enrollment. So if, that's, if this is something that you would like further information on, please do use the chat functionality to ask question and answers on this. So work experience. Oakland College has had a team dedicated to employability mentors who help students achieve valuable and relevant work experience placements. We are so fortunate to have the experience of our, uh, giving our students the experience of working at the Stables restaurant. I would like now to invite our chef lecturer, James Gronlund, to give a bit of an uh, example of experience that our students have had external placements, such as at Sopwell House and, Man uh, and St. Michael's Manor. So can I invite you, James, to talk a little bit about the experience that students have had externally? Uh, yes, you can. Hi, my name is James Gronlund. I'm a chef lecturer at Oakland College. 
um, and I teach NVQ level one. Um, so each student, every student has the opportunity to spend a week over in Sotwell House, our local hotel. And this is where they do a work experience, which is in every area of the kitchen. And so they have a two rosette restaurant. They have a brasserie, which serves breakfast, lunch and dinner. They do room service. They have a pastry department where they make the bakery desserts and everything in house. They have a banqueting department and you guys all get to go there for a week for your work experience. So it's just valuable insight into the catering industry. It's, it's really valuable work for you to do and it just enhances your experience at the college and works alongside what we do. So it's um, a really good plus for you guys. I would now like to invite back uh, our head chef, uh, Martin West, to just to give a little bit insight of what the work experience looked like for internally in our stables restaurant, especially talking about our Thursday evenings. So if I can ask Martin West to come back. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so every student uh, across all levels will be working in the stables at some point. Um, so from Tuesday to Friday, we're open uh, every lunchtime. And then our real jewel in the crown is our Thursday evening services. Uh, where we try and implement as much fine dining and that's where we will sort of take on those uh, those new techniques and things that are a little bit outside the curriculum um, and the, the massive bonus of those Thursday evenings is you don't get that sort of pressure and experience um, just from doing a college course it, it puts you into a real proper restaurant environment um, you get to see the customers whilst they're eating as well and you pretty much get live feedback which is um, which is a real bonus as well again something that you won't find in many other college environments or or in actual working places so it's a, it's a real plus. Just to add on there I do believe we have a social media Instagram handle for the Stables restaurant and we will add that to the chat functionality right at the end do follow there because you can see what our current students have done in this previous year and you can see and continue in future years what our students will be doing so that is a great op opportunity for you to uh, interact with us socially and follow the work that our catering students do. Okay, so student experiences. Uh, I would now like to invite our head chef again, Mark Sharples, to talk a little bit about the experiences some of our students have had externally going on to residential trips and what how valuable that has been to them part of the course. So Mark, can I please invite you to come back and speak a little bit about the experiences? Yeah, hi, yes, yeah, Mark here again. Um, yeah, we, we do um, a lot of student experiences. We, we try and get out as much as we can. Uh, within the time frame of the course. Um, this year, we, I took my level one students to the Shard uh, in London, which is a deluxe five-star hotel. We had a tour of the hotel, looked at, um, looked at the different aspects of it, learned a tour of the kitchens, met the head chef. Um, some students are working on a unit, which they have to compare uh, to, uh, to uh, hospitality industries uh, from the commercial and the public sector. So this has really gained valuable experience in talking to staff and, uh, and, and different uh, parts of the hotel. Uh, we also visit Nisbet, who are a supplier for, for Chef White. So they, they supply a lot of our equipment. So we got to talk to them. And we, got, we, got to, um, we went to Rationale. Rationale is a company who makes all the equipment uh, for, uh, for our business. So we got the hot, sort of top of the range equipment that we can use. And we go there for a training day. And, and we look at how this, this equipment actually works. It's a real plus. Also, our level threes, they went out and actually ate at the Shangri-La Shard at the Ting restaurant uh, to compare to dining experience. So it's a real plus when you get to sort of level three. So that's the sort of things we will do. We encourage students to get out and, and, and go to different places to experience dining and also talk to the people in the industry. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mark. I would now, now to invite our chef lecturer, Anthony, to give us a little bit insight of what our hospitality students in, in events management do on the course with the internal experience that they have. So, um, Anthony, can I pass that over to you? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so we've had a we've this year we've had a couple of events um, that we've had to we've had to set up and plan and cater for. And as part of the, the level three BTEC in, in hospitality, one of the units is to is to plan an event, so that's perfect for us. So we use that, and um, it was a event on in the backfield and at Oakland's College where we um, we we set up our own catering. Um, we provided the style of service, and we actually wrote the menu and and served the food. And a lot of our other students from other courses um, 
did the cooking for the for the uh, for the event as well. So it involves a lot of other different areas that you might want to be involved in. Thank you. For our student success story, so I'd like to invite Mark back to talk us uh, through our uh, successful students so far, how their journey was and how what valuable skills they gained at Auckland's College and what the students are currently doing or going to do. So Mark, can I ask you to come back, please? Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, um, we're going to talk about Lauren. Lauren on the left there, uh, Lauren Hart um, is an ex-student. Lauren did uh, three years with us. She did the BRQ Level 1, uh, the BRQ 2 and Level 3. Um, and passed with distinction, a uh, very good student. Uh, she worked at, she started off working at the Pudding Stop whilst at college, which is um, which is owned by a guy called Johnny in St Albans. He was on the Bake Off. He owns that, so she worked, she got some valuable experience early on. And then after, uh, within college, she started to work for Phil Thompson. Phil Thompson is probably in the top 50 uh, chefs in the UK. He had a Michelin star at Brocket Hall, a Berge de Lac, and he now has his own personal restaurant in St Albans and Lauren worked there. She actually left there and she now actually works for Oakland's College. So she's a um, ALS a learning support student. She's got valuable uh, knowledge about catering. So she supports our catering students and speaks to them about her uh, um, her industry experience and her time at college. And Maisie, Maisie O'Toole is now currently at, at year three doing BRQ level three. Uh, she works at a place called Astrid's House um, where she does a lot of baking, they do a lot of weddings and things like that. She's got valuable experience, brings that back, tells some great stories. Um, she's actually after college in June, she's going to be off to a place called Celtic Manor, which is a deluxe five star hotel based in South Wales near, near Cardiff, where she's going to be working as a professional chef. They've got a three rosette restaurant um, under a guy called James Summerlin, who's got a Michelin star in a place called Ask. So she got she got some real quality people to work with and we wish her all the best as well. She's a fantastic student and a great asset to Oakland's College. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. So the six steps to start into Oakland's College. I'll now pass this on back to a marketing team to take you step by step in terms of what you need to do in order to enrol onto the course. Perfect. Thanks, Anita. Um, so if you've decided that this is the right course for you, your next steps are to go onto our website. You can get onto our website via www.oaklands.ac.uk um, that, that email will be on the screen now. Um, if you need to talk to anyone about a course or, or want any more information or have any questions after this Q&A session that's going to come up shortly, um, you can email info at oaklands.ac.uk um, or alternatively you can use our live chat functionality on our website and um, that will pop up on the bottom right hand side of the screen for you. Um, if you're still undecided about the course that you want to apply for, don't panic. Um, you can apply for as many courses as you like. Um, at this stage, it, it, that's absolutely fine. And um, once you've applied for your your course, our admissions team will then be in contact with you. Uh, they'll, they'll review your application and they'll get in contact via email um, regarding your place in the course. Um, so please do remember from now until sort of August, September time to keep checking your emails um, for updates from us there. Um, as we mentioned earlier on, we understand this is a really difficult time for, for students not knowing what grades they're going to get and when they're going to be allocated them. Um, it's our understanding that you'll get your results from school on the normal results day in August um, in line with government guidelines. Um, we will then be in contact regarding enrolment in August once we've been made aware by the government of the next steps regarding social distancing. Um, and then once we've, that's out of the way, we will then keep you informed um, now between now and August for any news or updates and potentially events that might be coming up and um, if we can still run them. Um, once you're enrolled into your course, you'll begin in September. Um, we really look forward to welcoming you to, to the Open College family. Um, finally, just before I hand over to the, the Q&A session, um, keep up to date with all of our college news, all of our social media um, happenings. We'd like to sort of show you what's going on during isolation and what's still going on at the farm and, and lots of things going on. And as I say, the, the Stables restaurant as well. Um, you can visit our website to do that, or you can follow us on our social media channels. Uh, you'll find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok with the handle at Oakland's College. Um, so I'll now hand back to Anissa, who I believe is going to handle some of our brilliant questions that have come in. So, Anissa? Mm, yep. So just bear with me, guys. Okay. All right. Okay. So, right. Okay. We've had a question come in to our social media. Do you? Do you have to come in into the evenings and weekends? So I will pass that question over to Martin. 
Yes. Okay. Um, so everybody works the Thursday evenings again from level one all the way up to level three. Uh, everyone takes part in them. What happens is you get put onto a rotated system and it ends up being about once a month you'll work on the Thursday evening. Uh, as for weekends, we do actually have functions where we'll cater for external customers. Uh, so like we've had Olympic gold medalists come in and have a function, um, big wedding parties, all that sort of thing. Uh, and those do come, uh, come along occasionally. So we do look for you guys to want to take part in these because, again, these are really valuable chances to experience something that you may never have done before. Um, and again, just puts you into that work experience and that real realistic environment. Um, so those weekend ones are more optional. However, if you start missing the Thursday nights, then you have to make them up somewhere. So we uh, try and fit them in there. OK, so the next question is, how many days will I have to come to college? I'll pass that over to Mark Shuffles. Uh Yeah, usually um, on average, it's three days a week. Um, you do between 12 and 16 hours a week. Some of the BTEC level three will be four days from next year, but generally three days a week. Um, the timetables are not quite set at the moment, but um, the, in general, you'd be doing two practical lessons. If you're doing the, you're doing the professional cookery level one, you'd be doing two practical lessons a theory slot, a PDR slot and work experience and some independence. I, I can confirm all courses will be a minimum of three days. Uh, there will also be an element of directed study and independent e-learning that which will be part of your course. Um, OK, so what are the hours of college? Uh, so all courses uh, on an FE programme are a minimum of between 16 to 18 hours. However, that is not counting your work experience and it's not counting your when, uh, your Thursday evening service. That is something that is part of your course and you have to complete it in order for you to get your qualification. Um, we've had some more questions on our social. Does everyone, hang on a second, do bear with me, I'm trying to. Um, does everyone get the chance to work at the stable restaurant? So I'll pass that over to Anthony. Uh, yes, in in some in in any any sort of aspect, yeah, there is always uh, an opportunity to work in the stable. So, um, if you're in a, on a level one course, you'll you'll be either in the kitchen. If you're doing MVQ level one, you'll be in the kitchen assisting um, your uh, your level twos in the evenings, and then you'll also do a, a lunchtime during the day. Um, for VRQ level ones, they We'll do some work experience in front of house in on Thursday evenings, um, but they don't do a cooking session downstairs in the stables. They do have two cooking sessions upstairs as as skills lessons. Um, yeah, so every every course on the in our department is involved in the stables in in one way or another. Okay. Thank you, Anthony. The next question is: Do you get to cook and bake on the course? I'll pass that question over to James uh yes you do yeah of course you do it's a cooking course uh i could give you some examples of the types of things we can cook um perhaps everyone could do that i don't know but um so we'll be making things like um uh, onion barges samosas um bread rolls naan breads pitters uh, mixed grills mixtures of curries and burgers and club sandwiches um there's so much that we do uh chicken kievs and chicken ballantines um We'll be making pizzas, pies, stews, casseroles, uh, desserts like mousses and cheesecakes, brownies, crumbles, lem lemon meringue pies, you know, loads of stuff. So um, anyone hungry yet? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you certainly made me hungry. OK, yeah. so we're at another question. How many students are there in the class? So I'll pass it over to Mark. How many students are there usually in the class? Um, it can range from uh, 12 to 20 we, we have two kitchens upstairs and so we try and minimize that to sort of 10 students per class but um if you're in a, a level one program for example there could be 20 22 of you in the class but it'll be split into two groups of 12 we do that for sort of health and safety reasons but generally as a rule in, in the cookery part of it there'll be 12 maybe in theory classes there could be a little bit more sort of 20 maybe so yeah it's, it's a bit of a mixture really Okay, so the next question that's coming is what time does college start and what college time does it finish? Actually, Mark, I'm going to pass this back to you because you've got a very good quote that we've got on our uh, production kitchen. So uh, what time does college start? And what, what do we expect from our students? What professional standards do we expect? So, for example, Stake, if you had a practical lesson at 9am um, on a Monday morning, 
we would expect you to be in ready with your whites on at least 15 to 20 minutes beforehand. I would so always say um, if you're early, you're early. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're after that, you're really late. So we, we expect students to be actually ready. It's going to take you at least half an hour to get ready, especially when you start college. It's a very challenging time. So you need to get your whites, you need to get your books, you, get, you need to get your knives, you get your hat. And if you're ready, we will not allow students in the class, in the practical lesson unless you're fully dressed with protective equipment. It's, it's a golden rule of a college. So I, I, I can also add that majority of our sessions do start at nine o'clock and don't don't finish any later than five or five thirty. But the main key thing here is is giving you those professional standards and making you ready for industry. Because in 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 the catering industry, you would be working hours of starting at four a.m. Uh, not that we're expecting you to come in at four a.m., but we do expect that preparation time. So although on your timetable it may say nine o'clock, our expectation will be that you would arrive at eight thirty. So another question is, what's the split between the theory and practical? Um, I think I can take this question and I will ask some of my colleagues to help me out. It really depends on the level of course that you are doing. There is a clear split between the practical and theory. There is there is obviously a, a majority of more of a practical uh, depending on the course. So, for example, if you're doing a professional cookery course, you will be doing more practical sessions and there is an element of theory. However, if you were on an events management and a hospitality course, there is a smaller portion of you doing the practical element and more of your theory. Um, if uh, I will try to pass this question over to James, if you could talk about your NVQ course, with how that is set up, and then I will ask Anthony to join in to talk about the events management in terms of the split. Um, so, okay, well, so, James. Okay, so the okay, so the NVQ level one course. Um, so it's it's made up of nine food units which we cover throughout the year. There's also a service unit, and that's to do with um, working in the restaurant and the the counter and, and takeaway elements of it. And there's also the mandatory unit. So the mandatory units are the most important to begin with, especially if you're new to the kitchen, um, because these mandatory units include uh, food safety, personal hygiene, wearing a correct uniform, making sure it's clean, learning the basics of health and safety. These things are essential. So we need to teach you how to recognize and prevent things that can cause you harm. So all the potential hazards in the kitchen. So we go through this a lot. Um, you also need to know anything about food allergies and foodborne bacteria, like salmonella, for example, and then all the equipment uh, and the kitchen environment and the hazards that are there. So there's the knives, the mixers, the fryers, the ovens, the open flames. There's, you know, there's so much danger in the kitchen. So as a student, you need to learn very quickly how to keep yourself safe and others safe because the kitchen is a really dangerous place. Um, we also develop communication skills that you are, that you need when working as a as a team in a kitchen brigade. That's also essential because it's a different environment to other environments. You need to know what to say, how to say it, when to say it. It's all time sensitive, time pressured. So it's just a different way of talking really. So thank you, we teach them thank you James. Um, Anthony, if you can sort of give a little bit of insight of the events management course, how much of the element is practical, how much theory? Yep. Um, so the events management course is about, um, it's mainly theory based. Um, there's there's, a, there's nine units per year and it's a two year course. Um, you will do two practicals of cooking uh, in each year. So um, so that's a lesson a week doing uh, cooking um, and being assessed cooking. But the rest of it is all based around planning events, um, the business side of, of, the, of the hospitality industry, uh, financial side of hospitality, lots and lots of different areas um, that would train you to be a good all round manager. So the learning to cook is is, is part of being a good a good hospitality manager. So that we. We, we have one, the, one day a week dedicated to, co to cooking. So uh, the short answer to that is depending on the course that you, and the level that you select, uh, the, pr the practical and theory element will be different based on the course that you go on to. Are there any more questions? OK, I'll pass it over back to marketing and. Lovely. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, guys. Um, so that concludes our um, our webinar. I hope you found it really informative and enjoyable. Um, 
be be by all means please get in touch with us if you have any other questions you can reach us by social media or as i said info at opens.ac.uk um and we hope to see you in september um and good luck on your education journey thanks guys thanks a lot thanks thank you me. bye thank bye. you bye thank you bye bye <laughs> so i'm gone <laughs>